So I've given you a lot of formulas pretty thick and fast. Let's go ahead and see if we can solve a problem to see how we use these. And the, the problem I'm giving you is a red light of wavelength 650 nanometer gives off a total of one watt of power. How many photons are given off in one minute? So there are a couple things we know. We know the power, which is joules per second, is equal to one joule per second. We also know the energy of a photon because I'm given the wavelength. So the energy of one photon in joules is equal to h c over lambda, which is 6.62 times 10 to the minus 34 joule seconds times 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second divided by 650 times 10 to the minus 9 meters. And let's go ahead and plug this all into my calculator here. And when I go ahead and do these numbers, I get something on the order of 3 times 10 to the minus 19 joules per photon. And I'm going to use pH for photon. Um, well, I know this 1 watt, my 1 joule per second, is in photons per second times 3 times 10 to the minus 19 joules per photon. And I can go ahead and guarantee that this is going to give me the correct units. And so all I have to do is take 1 over 3 times 10 to the minus 19th. And I come up with n equal 3.3 .3 times 10 to the 18th photons per second. And then if I take n equal 3.3 .3 times 10 to the 18th photons per second times 60 seconds per minute. Let's go ahead and plug this in on my calculator. Multiply by 60 and I get essentially 2 times 10 to the 20th photons per minute. Pretty straightforward. Let's take a look at another problem. Um, what's the intensity of the light one meter away? Okay, this one's a little bit trickier because I know what the power is, um, but now I want the intensity. And we remember that, that intensity times area is equal to power, or intensity is equal to power um, divided by area. So let's write that down because I want the intensity, and that's equal to the power divided by the area. And let's go ahead and draw ourselves our little light here. And to calculate the area, I'm going to assume a sphere with a radius of one meter. And that I know what the area is because the area of a sphere is equal to 4 pi r squared. And this gives me everything I need. The intensity uh, is equal to 1 watt. Let's go ahead and make that a capital W. Divided by 4 pi r squared meter squared. Um, and r is 1, so that's easy. So 4 pi is what? Something like, like 16 point something? Let me do this for 12 point something. 3.14 times uh, 4, yep, is equal to, and let's go ahead and do this on my calculator, and I come up with 0 0.08 watts per meter squared. And I can convert this to the more typical units of watts per centimeter squared by taking 0 0.08 watts per meter squared and multiplying by one meter divided by a hundred centimeters and squaring that and so that's essentially dividing or multiplying by 10,000 and I come up with if I move this one, two, three, four dividing by 10,000. So 8 times 10 to the minus 6 watts per centimeter squared. 
So that's how you see to convert between power and intensity. Let's do one more problem and then call it a day. What's the difference in energy between photons of 600 nanometers and 700 nanometers? Well, you think this might be an easy problem because in this case, delta lambda is equal to 100 nanometers. So delta E is simply equal to HC over delta lambda. And you calculate this, and you're going to find out you're completely wrong. And the reason for this is that the energy is HC divided by lambda. And if you look at the curve of 1 over lambda, you find it's not a straight line. So you can't do this delta trick anymore. Essentially, what you have to do is you have to calculate the energy at 600 nanometers and the energy at 700 nanometers and subtract them. So the real energy difference, delta E, is going to be equal to HC over 600 nanometers, realizing that's higher, minus HC over 700 nanometers. And when we go ahead and do this, we should get something on the order of a little, something like a 0.4 electron volts, which I'm getting just by reading the vertical distance delta E off of the graph there. So one trick people fall into all the time is that because it's a 1 over lambda curve, not proportional to lambda, you can't take the difference and calculate the energies. And and this is a, a fairly common mistake. You have to do it by subtracting the two energies. And that concludes our mini lecture for today, looking at photons, intensity, fields, and power. And we'll move on to something a little bit more exciting next time.